In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Substance in Maya plugin with Redshift. So to start, I am going to create a Redshift material. So here we'll just uh, create our Redshift material. And I'm going to just middle mouse click and drag that here onto the fence. In this tutorial, we're going to texture this fence here with an actual substance. So what I'm going to do now is create an instance of the Substance node. So I'll hit Tab, and we'll start to type in Substance, and I'm going to use the Substance texture. This generates for me the Substance node. Now, you want to be sure that you're using the latest version of the plugin, which you can get from our site at algorithmic.com. All right, so here in the Attribute Editor, we have the Substance file. So let's just browse for the file that I'm going to be using. And so I'll just go through my directories here to find uh, what I want to work with. And let's see here. We're going to be using this Rotten Wood SBS AR file. Now, this substance uh, is actually coming from Substance Source. Now, if you find yourself uh, loading the substance but not seeing anything in the attribute editor, uh, you can just click off and then click back on. It just refreshes the editor, and now we can see everything. So like I was saying, this particular substance comes from source, so that means that it contains outputs for both the spec gloss and the metallic roughness workflows. So here with Redshift, what I'm going to be using is our metallic workflow. So I'm going to uh, select the Redshift material, and here under Reflection, I want to set the BRDF to GGX. I can also take the Fresnel type and set this to Metalness. Now, in this case, uh, the map itself, uh, since it's wood, I know there aren't any like metal fasteners or anything like that on this fence, so I can just leave the Metalness here at zero. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the Substance and start to generate my textures that I need. And uh, my workflow here is uh, set to custom. Now I want to come down here to the automatic baking and I want to make sure that automatic connections is enabled. Here for the output cache, you can choose where you want these baked textures to reside. In my case, I just have it set to use my Maya project, which I already have set up here for this lantern project. Of course, you could also choose to use a custom folder and then browse uh, where this cache folder is going to exist. But like I said, in my case, I'm using the Maya project folder, and my format's going to be PNG. Okay, so uh, now that I have this uh, set up, what I'm going to do is uh, come back here, and I'm going to start to create my outputs. So I'm going to need a base color. And so when I generate this, you can see we'll, we have our substance node. We have our substance output. Uh, this here is just the substance as it exists in video memory. And then here we actually have a cached uh, texture. Now, this is the texture that was uh, baked and saved out to disk, uh, again being placed in my Maya project folder. It's read back in through a Maya file node. And so here you can see that I have all of the properties or attributes that are available to me on this file node, uh, specifically the color space. So the next thing I'm going to do here is take my out color, and I'm going to plug this into the diffuse color. So now we'll start to see uh, something happening here in our viewport and in our render. So let's go back here to my substance, and let's change our resolution here to 2048. Now this is just going to uh, recompute the texture so that we have a true uh, 2K resolution here. And now we can go back and start to create our other map types. So the next thing I want to use is roughness. So let's generate our roughness output here. So I'll just click the button. Substance Engine generates the maps that I need. And so here I have my roughness. You can see here that we set the color space to raw uh, by default. So this is the correct interpretation here for this roughness map. Another tip that you could use is just make sure that you uh, tick here this ignore color space file rules. Uh, what this does is if you happen to change any of the color management inside Maya's preferences, uh, it won't override any settings that we have here on the substance file nodes from the output cache texture. All right, so now that I have that set up, I can just take my out alpha here and plug this into my reflection roughness. And here you can see the update in the Redshift render. So we have our base color, and like I said, this, there's no metal I know in this particular uh, substance, so I'm just, instead of creating the map, I'm just going to leave the metalness here at zero. Now the next thing that I want to work with is I want to create uh, my bump. So what we can do here, uh, let's just uh, come back over here to our substance, and let's generate for us uh, a normal map. So we're going to click the normal output here. Uh, the engine's recomputing that, and then it creates the map. So here we have our normal. Now the next thing I'm going to do here, we'll create a node. Bring my create node menu over here. And let's come over to Redshift uh, where we have our utility. 
And what we're going to be working with here is uh, the Redshift Bump. So if we look here at the very top, we have Redshift Bump Map. So we're going to create that node. So this node here, you can see that it has an input map type, uh, and we can switch this here to tangent space normal. Now this node also now allows me to set an input. So what I could do is just middle mouse click and drag uh, my substance output here into the input. And you can see it takes the out color and just connects it to the input. And then finally, I can take the output of this bump node and just place it into the bump input for the redshift material. And so now I'm going to have some bump value. Now, if we come back here to the bump map for the height scale, I could actually use this to scale the, the intensity. So I'm just going to pull this slider here all the way to the right uh, and create uh, set this at a value of 2. And so now here you can see that I'm starting to get my bump rendering here in Redshift via the normal output from my substance. So when we take a look, this now becomes my shader network. And what we've done here is we've added the substance. Uh, we have created our base color, our normal, and our roughness. We're plugging these here into the Redshift material. For the reflection, I made sure that I set the BRDF to GGX, and the Fresnel type here is metalness. Again, we don't have to worry about that metal map because it's wood, so I just let the uh, metalness value be zero. And that's all you need to do uh, to work with uh, substances here with Redshift. Here you can see that I'm using the plugin version for Redshift uh, 2.5.56. So with 2.5, you can see that uh, we're able to work uh, with our metallic roughness workflow. Uh, also here uh, with this version, the bump map node now gives you the input map type for tangent space normal. And that again allows me to take my substance texture here, this is the cached output, and then plug that here into the input so that we can properly render normal maps or bump maps from substance outputs with the Redshift renderer. So that's going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.